coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Dornier Sea Star completes first flight. Fasana, flight schools are essential transportation infrastructure. And our April 1st episode is coming up soon. I'm Sophie Herlock. The prototype SN-1003, a new generation of the Dornier Sea Star amphibious aircraft, successfully performed its first flight last week in Germany. The flight was performed by Dornier Sea Wing's test pilot crew and took 31 minutes. The Sea Star SN-1003 attained the required approvals from IASA and LVA on March 19th. The new generation is equipped with a state-of-the-art full digital glass cockpit, new highly efficient propellers, several systems including air conditioning and stern thruster, plus a corrosion-resistant composite structure. The aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight of 5,100 kilograms, a maximum cruise speed of 180 knots true air speed, and 900 nautical miles as maximum range. Possible customizable interiors include cargo, VIP, passenger, and special missions configuration. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. There's never been a better time to become a pilot. At the Sling Pilot Academy, you can get your private, commercial, and instrument ratings in nine months for less than $63,000 and do it in modern, fun airplanes. Your flight training is gonna be as exciting as your future career as an airline pilot. SlingPilotAcademy.com Welcome back, it's time for today's trip around the patch. Bell will continue work to build and test a versatile, lethal, and sustainable prototype for the future attack reconnaissance aircraft program. The company is designing, manufacturing, and testing the Bell 360 Invictus, a prototype rotocraft designed to provide improved lethality, survivability, and extended reach for Army aviation. Bell selection by the Army follows almost a full year of design and risk reduction work by the Bell team as part of the initial contract phase. While anyone can surmise which way business jet sales and usage are headed based on the recent avalanche of negative financial news, the industry is arguably in better shape to weather this downturn than it was going into the 2007-2008 financial crisis. According to business aviation analysis Brian Foley, the epicenter of business aviation is the United States, where 63% of the worldwide fleet currently reside. The National Aeronautic Association announced nine aviation and space achievements will compete for the 2019 Robert J. Collier Trophy. The nominees are Airborne Collision Avoidance System Team, Bombardier Global 7500, Gulfstream G500 and G600, Hubble Space Telescope Team, Magni 500 Electric Propulsion System, Project Heaviside, Strata Launch Carrier Aircraft, the U.S. Air Force Boeing X-37B Orbital Test Vehicle Team, and Unmanned Aircraft Systems Traffic Management Team. EASA issued a safety information bulletin for lithium batteries installed on multiple models of emergency locator transmitters installed aboard airliners. These ELTM battery packs are known to be installed on, but not limited to, certification specification CS-23 and CS-25 aeroplanes. CS-27 and CS-29 helicopters, or equivalent certification regulations. Some of these ELT and battery packs may also be carried on board of an aircraft by the operator without being installed as an element of the aircraft's type design. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Fasana continues to work with interpretations of authorization for continued operation of flight training operators during COVID-19 related restrictions around the United States. As our country works through this challenge, an important factor is continuing the viability of the current and future air transportation system to provide transit of persons and goods as necessary during the emergency and recovery. Without continued training and currency of our pilot community, this ability would be hindered. 
As such, Fasana has sought input and interpretation from legal counsel. On March 24th, attorney Gregory Winton provided a memorandum of understanding that was additionally submitted to the Department of Homeland Security's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency's Director Christopher C. Krebs. This memorandum affirms a statement that under CISA issued guidance, Flight training would be included as a critical infrastructure activity. Those engaged in the provision of and receipt of flight training who work to provide enhanced compliance with CDC recommendations for eliminating potential COVID-19 exposure and spread would be considered exempt from travel limitations imposed by local authorities. With all the issues that surround us these days, it seems now is the time for a good laugh or two. For over two decades, the Aero News Network has had fun on April 1st and this year will be no exception. So this Wednesday, we are pleased to present this year's rendition of our April 1st issues and episodes on both Aero News as well as Airborne. We will go back to our normally scheduled programming on Thursday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.